We're all about facts, not fear, and providing information to keep you and your loved ones safe. Dr. Pio Coley joins us live. Doctor, welcome to the show. Good morning, Jeff. Hi, Erica. Hi. It's Good nice to, to have you. two people in studio, huh, Doc? It is very nice to see both of you guys. It feels like old times again. We're getting there, we're getting there, but we're keeping our social distancing, so no worries, Doc. Now, before we get to viewer questions, the buzz today is about this new model, obviously. It predicts that deaths in the U.S. will double by June. I thought we were flattening that curve, Doctor. How is this possible? Yeah, so let's talk about this new model because really what's changed in the new model is that we've now incorporated the impact of all of these states opening up too soon. So remember, we've always talked about two factors that influence how many people are going to die. One is the virus's behavior. The other is our behavior. Nothing has changed with the virus's behavior, but there has been a significant change in our behavior. Just this week, 42 states have relaxed social distancing, and cell phone providers have actually given us information that more and more Americans are now leaving their home, increasing the mobility, increasing the human contact. So there's been a significant change in our behavior, and essentially what was happening is our social distancing was flattening that curve. Many states, including us here in Colorado, had not actually made it up the mountain and started coming back down like the White House told us to do before we started opening up. So we're still on the way up, and now that we've started opening up, that mountain just got steeper, and we just increased those number of deaths. And what's less important is exactly how many deaths, and I hate to say that because every life lost is a human life, but what this tells us is that whether it's 134,000 deaths or 132,000 deaths, they're significantly going to increase because of this premature relaxation of the guidelines that has occurred this week. Makes sense. Well, Dr. Coley, another thing that's on a lot of people's minds is the meat packaging industry. Um, Melissa wants to know if she should be concerned about getting the virus from the meat itself or even the packaging. Yes, this is an important question, and as we've seen, a lot of meat packaging plants have actually had outbreaks. So let's talk about the packaging. The packaging certainly poses a lot of risk because we know the virus can live on paper for up to five days. So it's really important that you wash your hands thoroughly before and after handling any meat packaging. With respect to the meat itself, the risk is probably a little bit lower because we don't think that this is a foodborne illness. At least no cases have been described so far that it's been transmitted through food. But having said that, it is scientifically possible that it could be transmitted through food because there are receptors for this virus in your stomach and your intestines. So what I would recommend is that if you get any meat, make sure you cook it thoroughly. Now is not that time to try beef tartare recipe or anything that's raw or undercooked. Makes sense again. Dale says he needs to travel out of the state. Uh, out of the state. Is it safe to stay in a hotel right now, doctor? So, Dale, the safest thing, of course, is to stay at home. But if you must travel out of state and stay in a hotel, I have a few tips for you. The first is when you check in, make sure you maintain that social distance and wear the mask. The second is ask the, the lobby attendant if you can have a room that no one else has stayed in for the past few days because the likelihood of the virus being contaminated there is much lower. The third is make sure you wipe everything from your key card to the doorknobs to the light switches to the remote control. Everything needs to be wiped down. And then finally, now is not the time to enjoy the facilities at the resort, like the swimming pool or the exercise facilities. Just avoid the common areas, stay away from the lobby, just go in your room, go to sleep, and get out of there as soon as possible. Very informative as always, doctor. But before we go, it's time for Dr. Coley's silver lining. Uh, today, you wanted to talk about new ground in vaccine trials. Tell us a little bit more. Yes, Jeff. So, you know, you guys, I really need a silver lining today because I was very disappointed to see this new model and these new projections. But this has really made me feel a lot better. And that's essentially that we've had the first U.S. participants in a Pfizer trial here in the United States for vaccines. So the more and more vaccine trials that get started and they're all using different technologies for vaccines, the more likely we are to get a vaccine sooner. And as soon as that vaccine comes, it's going to be like the cavalry. It'll save the day for us. And I just can't wait for that to happen. Absolutely. Thank you, doctor. And of course, Dr. Coley will be back tomorrow with more great information. So if you have questions about coronavirus, you want answered by Dr. Coley, write us on social media. You can also email info at dailyblastlive.com. Remember, no panic, just prevention and precautions.